In this video, we're going to have a look at graphing trig functions. And this uh, video is going to primarily look at how we can change the amplitude of a trig function. Now, you should know what function we have here. You should be able to recognize that this is the function y equals sine x, looking at uh, the function within a domain of which ranges from 0 to 360. Now, that's a, a function you need to recognize. You need to know that it has a maximum value at 90 of 1 and that it has a minimum value of negative 1 at 270. Now, the period is what we call the non-repeating part of the function. So if you were to take that as a snapshot, because remember the sine wave carries on forever and ever in both directions, that is what you would need to, if you like, copy and paste in order to produce the rest of the sine wave. So we say the period is 360 degrees. Okay. Now, the amplitude is, in a sense, uh, can be thought of, I suppose, a bit like the the height of the function. So what you've got to do is you've got to say, well, what's the maximum value? And in this case, the maximum value here is 1. What's the minimum value? And here, our minimum value is negative 1. You work out the range between the maximum value and the minimum value, and the range here is 2, and you half it. Okay. So the amplitude is half the range between the maximum and minimum. Okay. So the amplitude here is 1. All right. Now, you should also recognize this function here. A function, as we look at the snapshot between 0 and 360, you should see that this is the function y equals cos of x. Now, this function, again, has a period, a non-repeating part, a cycle, which is 360 degrees long. So that's your period there, and that's what you would need to take a copy of in order to reproduce the rest of the function. So our period is 300 and 60 degrees again. And this time, your amplitude is going to be 1 as well, because your maximum value is 1, your minimum value is negative 1. There's a range of 2 between the highest and lowest value your function takes. Half of that is 1. So your amplitude is 1. OK, now you should also recognize this function. Here, we've got y equals tan of x. And you notice that you have, um, I suppose, a function which is quite different looking to the ones we've, we've looked at so far. Now, what you end up with here is what's called a vertical asymptote when uh, x equals 90. And you've also got another one when x equals 270. And you find that your function gets ever closer to this vertical asymptote as it climbs up towards 90, never actually touching. And then once you're beyond 90, you'd write down very, very close to it, and then coming up progressively away from it. And then as you come up towards the other asymptote, the same thing repeats. Now, this time your period is not 360. Your period is just 180. That is all I need of this picture, if you like, to reproduce the rest of the function. So if I took that, copied it, pasted it, I would be able to build up the rest of the tan function there. So a period here is uh, 180. Okay, so your period is 180. Now, uh, what I would like to do is I want to consider with you uh, if we think of functions that come in the form y equals a sine x, sine nx plus b, or a cos nx plus b. I want to look at the effect of introducing a constant in front of either sine or cos and see what effect that has on the function. Okay, now, you guys know that for y equals sine x, that the maximum value of sine x is 1. So if you're thinking about the function y equals 2 sine x, the maximum value of what I've just drawn in black is 1. So the maximum value of what we've got here in blue is going to be 2. It's going to be twice as much. And you also know that the minimum value here is negative 1. So the minimum value of 2 sine x is going to be twice as large. So it's going to be negative 2. So what we've got for y equals 2 sine x is a function which is very similar to sine x. So you've got your hill and then your valley, if you like, between 0 and 360. But you're climbing up to a value of 2 and going down to a value of negative 2. Now, what about the function y equals 3 sine x? 
Well, as you would maybe guess, this time we are climbing up to a height of 3 and going down to a minimum of negative 3. Okay, now with y equals cos x, if we then think about y equals 2.5 cos x, so what you've got there is going to be 2.5 times the extremes. So you're going to have a maximum value of 2.5, okay, and a minimum value of negative 2.5. All right? So to summarize, when you are looking at uh, trig functions, whatever constant you have in front of sine or cos gives you the amplitude of the function. And we saw the amplitude is half the difference between the maximum value and the lower, the, the minimum value it takes. Okay? So, what happens when we have a negative, when we have a negative uh, coefficient of sine x or cos x? What happens then? Well, going back to look at y equals sine x, if we are to think about y equals negative sine x, that's going to change the, the sign of everything you've got. Okay? So instead of climbing up to a maximum of 1, if it's y equals negative sine x, you're going to get not positive 1, but negative 1. And when you would have had negative 1, you're then going to have positive 1. So negative sine x just reflects along the x-axis, if you like. So instead of having a hill and then a valley, we've got a valley and then a hill. Okay? So a negative flips the whole thing upside down. So there's y equals cos x, and y equals negative cos x looks like that. So instead of starting at 1, you're starting at negative 1. Instead of descending down to negative 1, you're now ascending up to positive 1, and so on. Okay? Now, what I would like you to do is I would like you to have a think about what the equations uh, of these graphs would each be. Okay? So you can pause the video each time you see one, uh, have a go at it, and then we'll just tell you as we go on. Okay? So here's the first one. Now, what have we got here? Well, you've got a function, which is going to be y equals cos x. But your max value is 2. Your minimum value is negative 2. That's giving you a range uh, of 4, so your amplitude is 2. So it's y equals 2 cos x. Okay? y equals 2 cos x. Let's look at this one. Again, it's a cosine function, but this time your maximum value is 0 0.5, and your minimum value is negative 0 0.5. So the range here is 1. Half of 1 is a half. So your equation is y equals a half of cos x. How about this one? What have we got? Well, this is an upside down cosine wave. So we know that we're going to have y equals negative cos of x. But if you look here, your maximum value is 3, and your minimum value is negative 3. So that's a range of 6, so your amplitude is actually 3. So this is y equals negative 3 cos x. And as for this one, well, what you've got is a sine wave, so we've got no negative this time, but we do have to consider the amplitude. Your maximum value is 3, your minimum value is negative 3. That gives you a range of 6, half of 6 is 3, so your amplitude is 3, so your equation is y equals 3 sine x. That is the equation of that trig function. Now for this one, what have we got? Well, you've got an upside down sine wave. You've got your valley and then your hill. Now your amplitude, because the maximum value is 2 and the minimum value is negative 2, the amplitude is 2. So the equation is y equals negative 2. The negative because it's been flipped upside down. Negative 2 sine x. And that's it. Okay, so you should see from that why it is that the coefficient of sine x or cos x, the number that comes in front of sine or, or cos, is what dictates the amplitude of your function. So I hope that was helpful.